Welcome to clip uh, number 19 in my adventure of making the busker which is not going nearly as quickly as I had hoped and in my last clip I showed making the wooden a uh, handle which uh, took a, an afternoon or so to make and uh, now my next job is to make the connecting rods from the uh, crank to the bottom of the bellows and like all these uh, pieces they're more complicated than I expected and have taken longer than I thought and in fact the two connecting rods are different one is straight but one has to have a kink in it because there is a an obstacle in the way in the form of the axis of the main drive uh, wheel and so I decided to make my a connecting rod by using a circle of wood pierced with a hole stuck onto the end of a dowel a dowel pierced with a hole and a wooden washer at the end and these circles of wood I've made simply using a, a I'm not sure what the name is in in English a, a, a bell saw for cutting circles of uh, uh, wood and so I've made two of these the end of the I'm not sure that can be seen for the, the end of the uh, rod has been slightly curved to give it the motion that it will need when pumping the uh, bellow and the top of the second crank has had to be sawn in half through the middle with two screw holes because uh, otherwise this if it doesn't uh, disassemble there's no way of fixing it over the uh, the inner part of the crank so that was slightly more complicated and then I'm going to do awesome this is just gluing I've drilled through put a cocktail stick through twice uh, to give it its uh, kink and then uh, I'm going to cover that uh, with old-fashioned whipping uh, to give it the necessary strength that it needs. So my next job is to do the whipping. Okay, so I've mounted the con rod with that little wooden washer just pushed over the edge of the crank, a metal washer after that, and then I've sealed it on at the moment with an ordinary tap or faucet washer that I've drilled a five millimeter hole in and forced onto the end of the six millimeter crank and really I should have uh, taken the crank off, drilled a hole through it so that I could put a, a split pin uh, through there but uh, frankly the time I'm spending at the moment I couldn't be bothered to take the whole uh, crank assembly uh, to bits again so I've just wedged a, a washer on and that seems to uh, seems to work so that's the top part of the crank uh, working, uh, the crank and the con rod and then if I lift the organ uh, then you can see where it collects, connects to the bottom of the bellow and seems to work fine as well. So now I've uh, taken the second uh, con rod, the con rod with a kink and uh, I have cut off the end of the uh, wooden pegs in the form of little cocktail sticks and, so and sanded them down and now I'm going to do that whipping just around that. I don't know if it really needs it with the glue as well, but I think it will look nicer. And that's the idea. So whip that one, and then I can unscrew the top, remove the top half, put it over the crank, screw it back down, and uh, hope that that one works as so uh, well. So I'm off to do that now. So in theory, with that binding whipping finished, I need to just pull my last bit of string through the main loop, pull that tight, uh, get my loop organised and then pull the, the string so that my end is securely tucked away inside, inside the whipping and uh, pull that down and I'm done. And there's the second connecting rod uh, with its two top uh, screws, its uh, central cut glued onto the top of 8mm dowel 
and uh, it's uh, you can see that tile it doesn't really focus close up uh, it's uh, whipping and uh, the screw and washer here to screw and wooden washer in order to attach it to the uh, the better so uh, in theory my two um, two cranks are done I need to get this on and, and tested and now next operation well I'm done with my uh, two connecting rods now which seem to be working fine and it's a kind of breakthrough moment because now the connecting rods are working the two bellows are pumping and obviously if I close the air outlet that you can see the reservoir uh, fills up and so that means I can now join the reservoir to the pressure box and once that is done I can then test the uh, pressure with a, uh, a pressure water gauge and so as I said that's a bit of a breakthrough uh, moment and uh, um, look forward to seeing uh, what happens next so I have now installed the small block that will operate the lever of the spill valve when the bellows have opened to approximately 40 millimeters and so here's the block working and I have also pierce the block and in the base so there's a small hole uh, into which I can put the insert the end of the uh, spring on the top of the reservoir a hole on the top there so that the two ends of the spring will clip in and then I shall be able to uh, test the wind gauge pressure of the reservoir so it's a long job but we're getting there. And now you can see uh, the same, but with the spring in place. A few squeaks to iron out there before we finish as well. A little bit of adjusting, screws to adjust, and a bit of lubrication to get rid of unwanted, uh, unwanted squeaks. So I guess this is a sort of moment of uh, truth. I'm all set up, spring in place, uh, our stop block in place, relief valve ready to work. The tube that links the bellows to the pressure box. And I have closed off the tracker bar inside the pressure box with a bit of masking tape, except for one base pipe and then the ba base pipe is uh, uh, linked via its uh, exit uh, uh, nipple there to a very rough and uh, ready water gauge which uh, doesn't have any water in it yet and uh, this is as I say a moment of truth I will test the bellows and hope that I have my four inches wind uh, pressure but the anxiety is building and I'm going to stop for a cup of coffee before I go on so here's my gauge plugged into the busker with the zero mark opposite to each other water up to each zero mark and two inches down one side below my zero mark and two inches above the other side with the going down one side plugged to the bellows and now what I have to do is to turn the busker handle and see what happens well I've run my tests and it's looking uh, good I don't know how well this can be seen on the uh, film but the water level is here and the two inch mark is uh, here so if the water descends two inches this side and climbs two inches the other side then that gives me my four inches water pressure so I've uh, already done little tests and it's uh, remarkable because uh, I am exactly 
at the two inch uh, mark with the spring that I've made so uh, let's give it another go and uh, slightly over slightly over and then it slowly climbs down to its uh, zero so that is uh, very much um, light at the end of the tunnel and so all that remains now to be done is to tube up the uh, pipes put in the test roll and tune them and then a little back panel and some decorative features on the front we are nearly there and a historic moment to finish the clip the first note played on a pipe from the uh, organ. Mm -hmm.